welcome back to my channel um in today's video we are going to try to make something out of this big ball of yarn this is a uh, yarn that i received from circulo and it's called boroko it's a hundred percent cotton it's 494 yards and it recommends a 3.5 millimeter to 5 millimeter crochet hook so i have only one ball and i I've been trying to find ideas of what to create with this so that I can make use of it and I am planning to make a bag a very simple small bag out of it and um, yeah I'm going to be using a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook which is a G hook and then you also need a pair of scissors and a dunning needle to weave in your ends so let's get started and see how this works out so i'm also going to be using a measuring tape so that i give you the exact measurements of what i considered while making my bag so you're going to grab your hook and you're going to make a slip knot and to make a slip knot you get this uh end and twist it to form like a shape of a ribbon sort of like that and then you're going to put your hook through and you're going to yarn over pull through but don't let go of this and then yarn over and pull through again and then you can let go of this and pull this tail so that's how i make my slip knot and you're going to make a chain of 29 so this is not one of the chains so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six 27 28 and 29 so i have made 29 chains and that measures about a total of nine inches and once you get that i'm trying to show you the measurements so that you can consider the same measurements if you want the same size of bug regardless of what yarn you use or what hook you use so um you have your 29 chains and for this project i'm going to be using the seed stitch in crochet so you're going to skip over this very first chain here and you're going to go into the second one with a single crochet and then you're going to go into the next with a double crochet go into the next chain with a single crochet and then the next one gets a double crochet and we are going to keep alternating between the two stitches until the end of our row so single crochet double crochet and that's the repeat of this row until you get to the end So we're coming to the end of our row and I'm placing my single crochet in my second last chain and we have one last chain here you're going to go in there with a double crochet make sure you end your rows with double crochet and then start your row with single crochet 
every row starts with a single crochet and ends with a double crochet so we're going to row two and for row two remember i've told you every row starts with a single crochet that means you're going to chain one and then you're going to turn your work and since this is a double crochet you're going to go in there into the first stitch with a single crochet the chain one doesn't count as a stitch it counts as a turning chain so you have your single crochet into the double crochet here and then you're going to place a double crochet into the single crochet and that's the repeat you go into the double crochet with a single crochet and then every single crochet gets a double crochet so keep alternating between the two until the end of your row so the single crochets are a bit shorter let me show you so this is a single crochet you can see it's a bit shorter than this one this one looks a bit bulky so once you get to this one that looks a bit short you just know that that one gets a double crochet but then when you get to this one that's long you know it gets a single crochet so keep alternating between the two stitches until the end of your row So that's how the seed stitch is formed. It creates a really beautiful texture. And I am working on several projects with it because um, it creates a very rich texture. And I think I'm just in love with it. So I'll be working so many projects with it in the near future. So we are coming to the end of row two. So we have two stitches left you can see this is a double crochet so you place your single crochet into it and you can see the last stitch is a short stitch which means it's a single crochet that means you're going to go in there with a double crochet and that means row two has also ended with a double crochet which should be correct because i told you every row ends with a double crochet and starts with a single crochet so we are going to repeat row two until we have a total of 14 um, rows or six inches. So keep repeating row two until you have a total of 14 rows and then I'll meet you guys back when I have mine ready. Okay, so here we are with 14 rows of the seed stitch and this is the texture that it creates. Uh, it's really rich. And both sides look the same exact way and also you should keep in mind that each row has the same exact number of stitches. So since I started with 29 chains, and the one chain was the turning chain. That means every row of mine had 28 chains all together. So this is row 14 and that measures uh, about six inches. So whatever you're using, this is the measurement that I have for my uh, height of my bag. Then the width, is nine inches so once i get to my 14th row and i finish it i ended with a double crochet i'm going to chain one and i'm going to go around my uh, panel with a single crochet row so chain one here and then you're going to go into each and every row with one single crochet so this is one of the rows the double crochet there Go into the space with one single crochet and then go into the single crochet because it's double crochet single crochet double crochet single crochet they'll keep alternating so you go into the single crochet 
uh, space with a single crochet then go into the double crochet space with a single crochet and keep alternating all the way down until the base of your panel so since we had a total of 14 rows you should be having a total of 14 single crochets on the side because we are going into each and every row with one single crochet so that's the easiest way to keep track of whether you've placed one single crochet into each and every row So this is the single crochet and I'm placing my one single crochet there. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14. So that means I've done the correct thing. I have 14 single crochets and then you're going to slip stitch into the corner of your project. Slip stitch once and then you're going to go into each and every stitch at the base with one single crochet so we're going into each and every stitch every, each and every chain because the base had chains so I've gone into this one and I'll go into this one that creates a big hole here and then you go into the next with a single crochet and go all the way across you should be having a total of 28 single crochets at the base since we had a total of 28 stitches so make sure you just don't skip any of the stitches or any of the chains at the base So as you work, try to stretch it a bit so that it remains flat because we want a flat panel. So you're still creating the boundary. So I've come to the end here and I'm going to place my single crochet there and then into that same exact space I'm going to go in with a slip stitch just so that I can turn to this side. So when you get here we are going to be working across this but at the same time we are going to be weaving in this tail so that we don't have to weave it in later. So you're going to go into each and every row. So this is a double crochet, we've gone into it with a single crochet, then one single crochet into the single crochet on the side, which is this one. There's a row there that started with a single crochet, then there's a row that ended with a double crochet, and then one single crochet into the single crochet space. Find the row and go into it with a single crochet. So continue to do that all the way up and you should be having a total of 14 stitches. If you're not sure of what you're doing, you should just make sure you have a total of 14 stitches because here we have a total of 14 rows and we are going into each and every row with one single crochet. So just to cross check, you should be having a total of 14 single crochets all the way up. Okay, so I've placed my last single crochet into the very first row here at the top and then I'm going to cut off this because I finished weaving it in and I can get rid of it and this is how the back side looks like. Now um, 
when you get here that means we've worked the single crochet row all the way to this side but not at the top here so we're going to do the same exact thing you're going to slip stitch into that same space so that we can now turn to work at the top of our project and then you're going to go into each and every stitch with one single crochet this time you'll be seeing the stitches clearly so just go into each and every stitch with one single crochet across So I've placed my last stitch into the last, uh, my last single crochet into the last stitch towards the corner here. And now you're going to go into um, the very first single crochet that you did, which was this one, because we chained one here and then placed a single crochet in the double crochet space. So we are going to go into that first single crochet into the double crochet space and we are going to make a slip stitch. And after that you're going to chain one and then you can cut your yarn. So after this we are done with our first panel and we want a total of two of these identical so go ahead and work your second um, panel exactly like this and then I'll meet you back when you're done all right so I have my two panels ready and one of them is the back panel and the other is the front panel so since they are identical I don't mind any being the front or the back because I know I have the same exact thing but uh, the side where the single crochets are facing that's the front side and this is your back side same applies to this this is your front side where you worked your single crochet row and where the single crochet is facing the back that's your back side so i'm going to put the back side and then the f the top so the wrong sides are facing the same direction these are the wrong sides so I have my work like this and the next thing that we're going to do is to create the strap and that is going to be the same exact strap that goes to the sides to create the, the uh, to create room for our bag to be actually functional. So we're going to have some thickness here so that we don't have a flat bag like this but rather something like this so that our bag can be accommodating a few items. So let's go ahead and start on that. You're going to put this away and you're going to grab your yarn and make a slip knot. I hope you still remember how to do that one. I explained it at the beginning of the video. You can rewind and see what I did for the slip knot. And now you're going to make a chain of 159. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I have my 159 chains. And that measures about, let me see. About... about 50 inches when I haven't overstretched it. So that's the approximate measurement for my chain. So you're going to go into the second chain from the hook. So not this one, but the second one. And you're going to make your single crochet. 
and then double crochet into the next so we are not changing the stitch we are still doing the same exact uh, seed stitch alternating between single crochet and double crochet as you can see and we're going to go all the way down to the base of our chain and you'll have a total of 158 stitches remember every row starts with a single crochet and ends with a double crochet so I've come to the end of my first row and I've ended my row with a double crochet so you're going to chain one turn your work single crochet into the double crochet double crochet into the single crochet and repeat this until you get to the end of your row I decided to have a total of three rows for my strap uh, simply because I don't want my strap to be so thick and we still have the single crochet row to go around which is going to make it a bit thicker so three rows for my strap and now we're going to do the single crochet row so chain one go into the very first row with a single crochet single crochet into the single crochet row and then single crochet into the double crochet space so those are only three single crochets since we have only three rows and then I'm going to go into this space here with a slip stitch and then I'm going to start making one single crochet into each and every chain at the base of my uh, strap because this is the best because we were working well moving upwards so you're going to go into each and every chain with one single crochet and you can see as I work this I'm trying to weave in this tail so continue to do that all the way down then across until you get to this point here so we are going to go all around like this and when we get here we shall slip stitch into the corner we'll go to this side slip stitch into the corner and then come back all the way to the point where we've started our single crochet um, stitch so i have gone all the way around my strap with my single crochet row on both ends so this is what we have for our strap and now i'm here coming to the end so i'm going to be placing one single crochet into the last stitch there and then i'm going to skip over this chain that we did and I place a slip stitch into the very first single crochet that I did and then I'm going to chain one and I'm going to leave kind of a long strand because I want to join these two together before I start sewing the strap onto the bag so identify your right side your right side is the side where you've been working your single crochet row that means this is the wrong side so turn your work to the wrong side and we are going to be joining these two together so i'm going to put my darning needle This yarn is a bit thick, it's actually thick, so it's suitable for the project. So what I'm going to do is to join these sides together, stitch to stitch, make sure it's firm enough. You can use whatever stitch of your choice, that's really up to you. There are people who use the mattress stitch, but I'm going to just go back and forth until my uh, project is secure and I'm confident that it's not going to snap. 
So I've gonna curse and you can uh, continue to do the same exact thing back and forth. So I'm coming back this side because I noticed that this has a very uh, deep curve which I want to remove. So in order to remove this, I'm going to go into this one and I grab a stitch here so that we can close up that gap, that deep curve. That's what I'm trying to remove so that it's more like a flat surface. And after this, you're going to just weave in this end. Just go into several stitches so that it can't unravel. Remember, we are working all this on the wrong side of our work. So after that, you're going to cut your yarn. So we are done attaching the strap together to form a circular loop. This is what it looks like right now. So I'm going to turn my work to the right side and I show you what I have. You can see this, it's almost invisible, like it has disappeared within the stitch. We can't see anything like we've been joining. But uh, the reason why I did that is because I want this, much as we may not see it, I want it to be at the base of my work somewhere around here, not at the top or the sides where it's seen. So I want it to be at the base. So you're going to turn your work to the wrong side. Remember this is my right side because this is where I worked my single crochet row. So you turn it to the wrong side. Then this tail is the upper side of our bug. This tail here is the upper side. So when I turn it to the wrong side, then I'm also going to have my uh, strap on the wrong side so that I join these pieces together. We're going to first get rid of this. We don't need it right now. So the easiest way to, to attach is to count how many stitches you have, divide them by two, and then you count from the very first one, from the joining, towards this side. And then identify that stitch, and we start joining from up here, all the way to here, and then all the way to this side. So let's see what we have here. We have a total of, cause I'm counting from the very first one here to the very last one here on this side. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, fifty-eight, and then fifty-nine. Fifty-nine will be the slip stitch that we worked here in the corner. And yeah, so we have a total of fifty-nine. Divide by two. I'll be considering 58, so 58 divided by 2 is 29. And now I'm going to count 29 stitches from the exact middle here, the joining. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. 28 and 29. So this is my 29th stitch and it's going to be joined to the very first stitch up here, actually the slip stitch. And instead of going into both loops, we are going to be grabbing the inner loop, that one. And then for this one, we are going to be grabbing the under loop. So here we are grabbing the under loop here and then the under loop here. I'm going to join 
this first stitch two times. I'm leaving a long tail so that I can weave it in later. And then you go to the next stitch, you, go, you grab the under loop, not this one, but this one, and then grab the under loop of the strap. And we are going to go all the way down. So we are grabbing those loops that are close to each other, the inner loops. I hope you can see that happening. And we are working on the wrong side of our work. Make sure you don't forget that. So let's try to turn to the right side and see how our work looks like. So our right side will look like this and that is neat enough. So continue to join your work. So we are joining the first panel and then we shall join the second panel also. And then the other thing that you have to note is we are working towards that point where we joined. Make sure this is not at the top here where um, the joining is seen because I'm sure some of you may not get a very neat joining that you need to hide it somewhere. So the best place where that can be is at the base of your bag where it's not even seen. So now I'm going to the base of my bag and I'm joining stitch to stitch, but joining only the inner loops. So this is the joining, you can see it's now at the base of our work and we're just going to go into a few stitches there and then continue to join using the inner loops. So the joining will be placed at the bottom of my bag. And then the next thing that you're going to do is to keep joining until you get to this point. So let me go ahead and work mine until I get to this point and I'll show you how it looks like. Just keep joining the inner loops and bring this strap all the way to this point. Okay, so I'm done going all the way to the other side. And now I'm going to just join the very last stitch, maybe this one that's connected to the knot. And then I join it to the next stitch, the next loop on the strap. And then I join that. And that's enough. I'm going to cut my yarn because I have a tail here. And after cutting, I'm going to tie a knot because this is the wrong side of our work. You can just weave in the ends. That's the better option actually. But I'm going to just make a knot. And then this is what the work looks like on the right side. 
this is the base and then this is the other side so the next thing that we're going to do is to attach our second piece of the bag so this one is going to be remember this is the upper side of our work so we're going to attach it the same exact way that we did for the previous one you're going to count the number of stitches then count I believe they're the same so we counted 29 stitches from here and then you're going to join all the way to this side but make sure you're working on the wrong side of our work actually this doesn't have a right or wrong side you're the one who knows that but I think both sides are cute but this is the wrong side of our work so turn it to the wrong side bring your piece and turn it to the wrong side and then join it from this end to the other end and I'll meet you guys back when I'm done with that so I've made it all the way across you can see I have very little yarn left I've tried my best so that I don't reconnect yarn but yeah this is what I have and now I'm going to go ahead and weave in this end I'm going to just go into the next stitch then just to make sure it's secure enough I'm going to go into a few stitches here so remember we are still working on the wrong side of our work At least I want to put it through a few more stitches. That's okay. Now we're going to cut this. This is the wrong side of our bag. And now it's time to turn it around to see what happened on the right side. So this is the right side of our work. And this is how our bag has come out. Uh, let me try to zoom out. So this is what the bag looks like. We're going to go ahead and weave in all our ends so that it becomes neat and functional. So let me go ahead and do that. So you can go ahead and put something like a string and then a button here if you wish but this is how simple I'm going to leave my bag. I've shown you the basics of how to create it and I hope you liked it. So this is my project finished. You can see it has room for so many things. You can put your phone, your daily uh, utilities and yeah this is what has come out of it i hope you guys liked this tutorial make sure you give it a thumbs up if you did and i will see you in my next video don't forget to subscribe to my channel bye